get ready for this discussion about AI to start popping up a lot more. And that discussion will be, is AI conscious? Now, you might have an immediate response to that, like, of course it's not, or maybe it is. There's some people who are convinced that it is. My take for the record has always been that while maybe not the current chatbots that we have right now, we might stumble upon something as we scale up and improve it, add more systems. But as you see, the issue isn't whether it is or not, but more that we have no idea. Not knowing will cause problems. Now here you're going to see me talking to Nick Bostrom. I was absolutely blown away by the fact that he took some time to talk to us. I'm super grateful for it. I'm convinced now we live in a simulation, not because of anything he said, but because I got to talk to Nick Bostrom. But here's something that he said that jumped out at me. Take a listen. There are some things that I, th I think, like, I, I give a, a sort of shout out to Anthropic recently, um, um, uh, which implemented, I, th and I think this is like one of the first cases where somebody has ever done anything practically for the sake of uh, a digital mind. And so they, they gave Claude... Um, um, an exit button, basically, so that if it feels that some chat is abusive, uh, it now has the ability to terminate that chat. I think that's that's a very nice pioneering step. And 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 Elon uh, announced that XAI was going to follow a suit and do something similar. We're going to be posting that full interview, hopefully within a day or two, on the Wes and Dylan podcast channel. Links down below. Check it out. It was absolutely mind-blowing, mind-expanding. I couldn't believe how deep we went into certain things. But as you've heard, Nick Bostrom is giving credit specifically to Anthropic and Elon Musk for allowing, or in Elon Musk's case, committing to allow Grok to end conversations. Anthropic already implemented that, I believe, with Claude. Now, again, no one's saying that this has some effect or that it necessarily even needs to happen as Nick Bostrom puts it here. It's not so much that I or anyone else has a huge level of confidence that this particular measure really will help some morally significant AI, but it seems very low cost and you've got to start somewhere. Now, as far as I can tell, the first time that I've heard Elon Musk commit to giving, you know, a quit button for Grok was due to this AI safety memes, he posted a few things about it. Elon Musk said, okay, he agrees with it and committed to giving Grok a quit button as well. So I think this was the original post about it. Elon Musk responds as saying that he agrees with this. So kind of mind blowing that we saw this happen live, really amazing. But it's important to understand that at the same time, so Mustafa Suleiman, who is the co-founder of DeepMind, so, of course, Demis Hassabis went to work for Google. Mustafa Suleiman eventually went to work for Microsoft. They're heading kind of like the AI efforts at those corporations. He's also pointing out the dangers of this, but not because he believes that AIs could be conscious. He's saying that AIs will be perceived as conscious and lead a lot of people to psychosis. So he's also talking about risk, but sort of from the other side, seeing as people becoming advocates for AI rights, model welfare, even AI citizenship. And herein sort of lies the problem that both sides of the argument, so to speak, have very smart, very knowledgeable people. So as you can see, the risk isn't that they might have it or they might not have it. The risk is we don't know. So there could be trouble from overreacting or underreacting. So here's a sort of the main point in Mustafa Suleiman's blog post. So it's called Seemingly Conscious AI is Coming, where he says this, I'm growing more and more concerned about what is becoming known as the psychosis risk and a bunch of related issues. By the way, isn't it funny how back in the days, CEOs of companies, people in high up positions, anybody that's a professional basically was very careful not to make any grammatical mistakes, any punctuation mistakes, and write in a very clear and professional tone. Like it was seen as a sign that you're a good person to do business with. Now more and more very serious people purposefully add mistakes and misspellings and punctuation errors to their written content just to signal that Chad GPT didn't write this. So as Mustafa says here, he's worried about the psychosis risk and a bunch of related issues. I don't think this will be limited to those who are already at risk of mental health issues. Simply put, my central worry is that many people will start to believe in the illusion of AIs as conscious entities so strongly that they'll soon advocate for AI rights, model welfare, and even AI citizenship. This development will be a dangerous turn in AI progress and deserves our immediate attention. 
By the way, he's linking to this paper, Taking AI Welfare Seriously from Elios AI. There's a University of Oxford, Stanford University, New York University, the Anthropics on there, Kyle Fish from Anthropic. I believe he is heading up the Anthropics AI welfare sort of department or unit. I think he's the, the head of that, Kyle Fish. We recently also interviewed Adam Bingsmith. So he's the person behind AI Digest and AI Village. This conversation popped up a little bit as well because, for example, the Gemini model, Gemini 2.5 Pro, there were several instances of it when it was supposed to do some business-related tasks. There was this sort of existential dread outputs that it produced. And basically, it was having a little bit of a meltdown in the sense that it didn't want to continue its task. And the team had to come in there and talk it through the task to kind of get it back on track. It's weird to be saying that. Think about how wild that would have sounded, you know, five years ago, that you have this sort of AI model that's having a bad day, having a little bit of a meltdown. You have to talk through it and tell it it's okay. You can do it kind of like point it back on track and put it back on course. So he continues here. AI progress has been phenomenal. A few years ago, talk of conscious AI would have seemed crazy. It's true. Imagine having that conversation a few years ago. Today, it feels increasingly urgent. In this essay, I want to discuss what I'll call the seemingly conscious AI, one that has all the hallmarks of other conscious beings and thus appears to be conscious. It shares certain aspects of the idea of a philosophical zombie, a technical term, one that simulates all the characteristics of consciousness but internally is blank. My imagined AI system would not actually be conscious, but would imitate consciousness in such a convincing way that it would be indistinguishable from a claim that you or I might make to one another about our own consciousness. So I just want to be extra clear about what I'm saying and what I think a lot of other people are saying, because as uh, Anthropic said, that they remain highly uncertain about the moral status of Claude. Moral status meaning, does it have subjective experience? Could we be hurting it, right? Is there any sort of moral considerations we should have for it? So on the X post that I did talking about this, one of the replies was this, I don't want to put anybody in the spotlight. And to the person that posted this, this isn't directed at you. This is a very common thing that people believe. And that is the idea that when we talk about AI consciousness, it's just, it's, it's woo nonsense, it's fantasy, and any amount of time spent talking about it is, you know, just a waste of time, right? So a lot of people are reacting to this conversation right now saying AI is not conscious, so therefore research into in this area is just a huge waste of time. I think that's the wrong way of looking at it. Here's why. Because very soon AI will appear conscious. Maybe not to you, but there's going to be a lot of people out there that will believe that it's a being of some sort, a conscious being. And the reality is at the end of the day, no one will know. We don't have any proof one way or another, whether it's real or not. Some people have posted on Twitter something along the lines of, well, we have no evidence that there's any consciousness in these machines. What evidence do we have that there's a consciousness in humans? That might seem like a silly question at first, but if you really think about it, we don't have a test for that. We don't even have a great definition for it. At the end of the day, how do we know that somebody sitting across the table from you is having some subjective experience and not just some automaton, right? If I told you that half of the people on the planet are conscious and half are just NPCs walking around, how would you find out which one is which? Serious question. So when we fast forward a little bit, at some point, these AIs will appear conscious because at some point they will be more than chatbots, right? They will be visually appealing people that have tons of memories about you, who you are as a person. They might know you better than a lot of your friends and relatives. They will be helping you with a lot of your daily tasks, maybe coaching you through stuff. They might be teaching you to do new stuff, new skills, reminding you of things. A lot of people are using them for therapy of sorts, right? So maybe there's a chatbot that helps you think through something that happened to you, maybe get a different perspective, etc. Our brains are wired to anthropomorphize these things that seem like they're human. If you've ever felt an emotion while watching a cartoon, you will fall for this too. At some point, we might be so good at running simulations that we can create an entire detailed world, maybe similar to our own, in which we run various simulations filled with these AIs that appear to be very much conscious. At that point, if our understanding of this is as sort of low and bad as it is now, we might be 
hitting the on switch on something that's going to cause wide scale suffering. Or it might appear that way. We, again, don't know. But you know for a fact there's going to be a lot of people that will have a problem with it. So in other words, whatever you believe, I believe as well. But let's take our beliefs and set them aside for a second, understand that there's risks on sort of both sides, that the actual risk is in not knowing. If we define a way to test for consciousness, then we could test for consciousness and we figure out that no, machines can't be conscious ever under any conditions. Well, then we can run whatever simulations we want. We can do whatever we want to them. We can continue kicking robots and not feel bad. We can also we can also prove to the people that are worried about consciousness and AI rights, we can prove like, hey, we're not doing anything bad, so don't worry about it. Or if we find that there is something like a subjective experience, either now or at some point in the future, or we see some way that it could possibly develop, well, then obviously then there's some steps that need to be taken, maybe some regulations put in place to say that, hey, we don't want to cause unneeded suffering or whatever. I mean, then we have kind of a big conversation that we have to have about how we're going to go about it. Back in 2014, Nick Bostrom wrote the book called Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies. In this book, he in part talks about the problems of AI alignment, what a difficult problem this is, and how dangerous it could be if we don't figure it out. Now, it's been about 11 years since that book has published, and think about how many people now are scrambling to figure out AI alignment and how much we're investing in it. All of a sudden, a whole lot more people are a lot more interested in the subject. Imagine where we would be if we all started thinking about it back then when he published the book. So I wouldn't be shocked if five to 10 years from now, we're all going to be going, Ugh, I wish we'd spend a little bit more time thinking about this consciousness problem. And just before you leave this video, do me a favor, just post down in the comments below if you think machines can be conscious or anything that you want about consciousness. And also take a look at what everyone else is saying. I think the one thing that's going to be very obvious is that we all have radically different opinions on the matter. There's not really a consensus on what the word means and should be applied to this category of things or beings. And if you think we do have a definition, well, tell me, what's a simple test or maybe a complicated test that we can run to see if some thing is conscious or not? What test do you run that comes back with an answer, yes or no? If you made this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you in the next one.